Hey there YouTube, Arbonus69 here, and I'm back with another 3D printing video. Now this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but um, I've had a 3D printing project in the pipeworks for a while now, and I wanted to get that uh, underway. But there'll hopefully be more on that coming soon to the channel. Anyway, this video is how to improve the quality on your CTC 3D printer. Now this is something I have looked at uh, on the forums, on the internet, read various posts, talked to various people and I've had a lot of information and feedback about the subject. Now if you're watching this it means you have a CTC 3D printer and you want to improve your quality. Now like me you may have read that additional mods can help, better filament can help, changing the settings of your software, printing slower, printing at a smaller resolution etc. There are lots of things to try. This video is to show you what I have done and what has made the best difference for my prints. The first biggest difference I've noticed is to change the hot end on the printer. Now I know it seems like a bit of a no-brainer um, as the hot end that comes with the CTC stock is quite a cheap one. But I took the recommendation, bought this new hot end. I was a bit dubious because it looks identical but it's made a massive difference. So let's take a look at what you get in the package when you buy it. Right, this is one half of the kit. You get two of these in the package um, to provide you with two hot ends for the printer as the CTC is a dual, uh, dual head printer. So what do we get? We get the nozzle, we get the block, we get the uh, thermal tape and we get the throat for the, uh, the filament feed. Now all in all it does look very much similar to the stock as I said however it's made a vast difference to print quality. This is a 0.4mm um, print head so let's have a look. This is the print head. As you can see, it looks identical. This one's never been used, as I only print with one of the print heads on my printer. So it does look remarkably similar to the stock one. The, uh, the next thing we have, but you get thread on both sides for the throat and the hot end to go through. You get a screw hole at the front there for the, um, I'm presuming it's the thermal reader that tells you what temperature it's at. And then this hole here is where the uh, heating cartridge goes through and that's the, uh, the grub screw that locks it in place. So again, very much similar to the stock hot end. This is the uh, thermal tape insulating pad stuff. I have no idea what it's made from. If anyone knows, again, please leave it in the comments below. Educate me. Um, it's not sticky, it just wraps around. What I did was I bought some uh, gold captain tape to secure this in place with. And the last thing, which is the biggest difference, is the actual throw that the filament goes through. This, I don't know if you can see very well in there or not, has the um, this has the tubing inside, which I think is PTEG. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But it's got the, the tubing to allow the, uh, the filament to feed, and it's also uh, chamfered at the top there to allow easy loading of your filament through it. So to assemble, it's very, very simple. Um, make sure that is at the front a little screw hole. This screws into there like so, halfway. This screws into the bottom part and then just tighten them up so they meet in the middle. There we are. So you end up with something that's a bit like that. And then get this, depending on which way you want to do it. Um, pop that on there. Actually, to be honest, that looks a larger hole than that, so we will pop that on there, spin it round. That goes over there and just wraps round. And then all I did, sorry, my fat fingers are in the way of this. There we go. And all I did then was I got the gold captain tape and just secured it around that side and that side to hold it in place. And that's all there is to assembling the hot end. It is very, very simple. So let's go and have a look at mine that is already assembled on my 3D printer and let's see what it looks like. So here we are, the CTC 3D printer. And there you can see the hot ends installed. As you can see, this one sits lower than the stock one. This is the stock. The reason for this is because the new throat is a little bit longer on the new one than the original stock, so bear that in mind. The other thing that I had to slightly modify is this front part here, which I'm presuming is what reads the temperature of the thermal block. It wasn't quite, the wires weren't quite long enough to stretch, so I had to uh, feed some more through. The same with the actual heating cartridge as well, that had to be fed through a bit further. 
but it wasn't that hard to fit at all to be honest I don't know if we can make it out underneath here or not um, my wonderful captain tape that's holding the whole thing together <laughs> and that works absolute wonders so that's the first mod that I did to the 3D printer. The second one, which you've probably read yourself, is change the print bed. Now, the reason I did mine was because mine was slightly warped. Um, the centre was higher than the edges of the print bed. So by putting a glass bed on mine, I've evened the whole thing out a lot. Now, the glass bed I bought was a borosilicate glass bed off Amazon, I do believe. I'll put the details down below where to buy it from. And uh, the reason I use the borosilicate glass is because this is tempered high temperature resistant glass. It's the same thing that's used in Pyrex dishes. Um, it's not expensive but it is very tough. I'm, I've dropped the stepper motors on mine three times and it's never smashed. Now I'll take you over to the printer again and we'll have a look at the print bed. B1, it's a mess because I've got uh, print stick on it from printing but this has helped a lot. Right, so this is the borosilicate glass bed I've put on top of my 3D printer aluminium print bed. All I did was I peeled off the blue tape, I left the gold captain tape in place, which is why it looks gold in colour, and popped it straight on top and uh, started printing. Now this that you can see on here is uh, print stick from other prints, it's a little bit, a little bit messy, but there you go, you live with it. Um, what I have got is on the side here, um, I think this focus properly, there we are, is these little tabs, there's one on each corner, they're just 3D printed, to hold the play thing in situ and then I've just secured it with a bit of blue painters tape just to make sure it doesn't slide about and that's all there is to the glass bed and believe me it makes a big difference to printing. Prints adhere much better when there's a print stick on the base of the prints are a lot better and uh, the overall quality is improved as well. So those are the two main mods that I have done to improve print quality on my CTC 3D printer I'm not saying it'll work the same for you, you may need to tweak a few more settings etc. I've had to down my software in as well, um, but this has made a huge difference. So let's take a look at some prints that I've done before the mods and after the mods. Right, here we have two identical parts, both printed with the same um, filament, obviously they're different colours, but they are both from Rigid Ink Filament. Now, this one was printed before I changed the hot end, this one was printed after I change the hot end. I'll let you have a closer look at them. So as you can see here, oops, there we go. So you can see the print quality isn't brilliant. There are rough edges to it. This underside part here hasn't printed very well at all. It's very rough. There are parts missing. As I said before, before I um, got things working a lot better, I was happy with this and this could be fixed in post with filler, um, paint, etc. But I decided that um, I wanted better prints for my printer. I knew it was capable of doing it. I'd seen other people do it. So there we are. You can see it's very, very rough. There are horrible overhangs, blobs and bits here. As I said, there's lines missed, etc. It's not a very nice print overall, to be honest. So let's have a look at after. And this is with zero cleanup done. All I've done is remove the support material from here. This is a lot cleaner. As you can see, there are no missed lines, there are no gaps. There's a bit of white paper on the back. The only difference, which I'm not sure you can see on the camera very well, but there is a slight colour change down here. And that was where the cooling, active cooling fan kicked in. But that is a lot better. You can see inside there are... And this hole here is partially covered and um, that can be cleaned up and there are blobs and bits etc on the outsides of these holes but overall this is a much much cleaner print this is a much solid line it's just so much nicer and this is down to the new hot end and the glass bed so let's have a look at another print we did these are both using rigid ink black filament this one is done before the mods this one done after the mods. So let's have a look at the before. As we can see here, the bridging hasn't worked perfectly. Um, the finish is very, very, very shiny, probably due to the temperature being a bit too high, to be honest. The top is a bit bobbly. Um, the print layer lines, it's not picking up very well on the camera, but there are 
subtle gaps in the layer lines down here. Um, on the back you can see there's a, a gap artifact here. The bottom, this is something I'm going to cover in a different uh, video on paying attention to before you print the print preview and making sure your orientations etc are correct. That was my fault, not the printer's fault. Um, there you go, you can see some of the uh, the striation lines here on this print. So let's have a look when we printed this after the two mods. There we go, so much better. There's no gapping apart from what's supposed to be there. The print lines are so much cleaner, crisper. There's no striation marks. The whole print is just so much cleaner, so much nicer. And I should mention all these are printed with the same resolution and the same settings. And obviously underside, this is after I corrected my original mistake. But there we are, that is the difference that it makes. So there we are, the two big changes I made to my 3D printer. Change the hot end, introduction of a glass bed, and it has made the prints so much better. These are just unbelievable now that the printer's churning out. This is what I would have expected from day one. Unfortunately, it is a Chinese knockoff. It's not the best printer in the world. It does have a bit of a bad reputation from some people, but with a bit of TLC, love and care and tweaking, you can get decent prints off it. You just have to be willing to spend the time and a bit of extra cash to get it going. It's never gonna rival an Ultimaker, a CNC or a Prusa i3, but it's going to come very, very close. Now I do need to do some more tests with the printer and push it to its limits and see what it can do with stress tests, etc. And I'll do another video on that further down the line. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, do me a favor, drop me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but leave some comments below and let me know what I can do better in the future. Also, if you can mash that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel, it helps out immensely. Until next time, take care.